This is a call to order the June 17th, 2020 mid-month meeting of the Ducktown Council. And I'd like to thank everyone who's joining us remotely today. Uh, this is a working session between council and staff, so we will not take any public comments, but you're welcome to send questions in and uh, our moderator will record those for later to discuss with uh, council. A couple of introductions we have with us today, and we're pleased, the uh, county manager, uh, Robert Otten. Welcome. And also I'd like to welcome one of our town attorneys, John Lighty. And at this time, I'd like to do a roll call of the uh, council. This is Don Kingston, mayor. Monica Thibodeau, mayor pro tem. Rob Mooney, council person. Sandy Whitman, council member. Nancy Cavanis, council member. Chris Layton, town manager. Robert Hobbs, town attorney. Thank you. I'm gonna go on to item number one, an update on EMS deployment strategy for high traffic. This time I'd like to turn over to town manager, Chris Layton. Chris. Thank you. As you all are aware, at the, at the June 3rd council meeting, staff was directed uh, to develop a plan with Dare County EMS for a strategy for the deployment of an ambul ambulance to duck during high traffic periods in the town. Chief Black uh, met with uh, Chief of Dare County EMS, Jenny Collins, and developed uh, the strategy which is included in your packets. Um, at this point, I would like to ask Donna just to go over the, the plan briefly, um, and then I'd like to invite uh, uh, the county manager to come up and provide any uh, input put he has and just kind of give a, a very brief overall overview of, of um, how EMS is, is deployed throughout the county. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yeah, Chief Collins and I met about a week and a half ago. Uh, she came to Duck Fire so we could walk through the public safety facility. We spent about an hour and a half together and talked through the logistics of the building, uh, her requirements for an ambulance, um, how we wanted to logistically ask for help, and also make sure we were clear, because this was the delay for us this spring, clear on our COVID decon procedures that we were comfortable with what we were doing and and she was comfortable with that and vice versa. Uh, again, they're the ones first out on calls that we're not even going to and we wanted to make sure she was comfortable bringing her folks in and that we understood each other's decon procedures. So from that period, uh, we sat down, I drafted what is now the revision in your packets as to how we will do that. So basically it's left with, and it's a strategy, there's not a lot of detail because we can't, I, if we say every noon at Saturday we're going to you know, request an ambulance and at noon there's no traffic, that, that ties us both down. So we've given it the flexibility we need that any day of the week or any period of time based on the two bullet points in your packet, uh, we can request to the op supervisor, either the chief, the deputy chief, or the supervisor on shift to uh, request that EMS consider coming up due to the traffic that it's gonna delay response to the north. Um, also, any given activities like the parade, obviously not this year, that was one we always worked with them on previously, but we outlined that in here. So if we have a flooding situation, uh, we have a major event, whether it's weather related or a bad structure fire, something that might uh, impede that north in response, we can ask for it then. Uh, then it'll be up to the ops supervisor whether they can they can fulfill that request and then uh, we'll work with them. We're comfortable with DECON. They know the uh, space limitations of the building and where they need to be and how they'll interact with duty staff and with volunteers. And uh, we had a really productive meeting and together came up with what you see in front of you. And we're, we are prepared to start this, this Saturday. I'll take any questions. One other thing I, I would add, just nothing in this would prevent um, Dare County EMS from making the request as well if they thought something was going on and, and wanted to, to make a request to put an ambulance um, at the northern, at the public safety building. So uh, what would cause, for example, what would cause Dare County to make that request? It, it, it could be anything. Um, if they saw something that um, idea, if they saw something that, or, or knew of something or had a concern and hadn't heard from us, nothing would stop, nothing would prevent them from making a request. This policy doesn't, doesn't mean that they can't also make the request if they would like to. Um, it, uh, it, first, it doesn't say that um, in here, so 
maybe that needs to be included if that's the case. Um, nonetheless, this is not, in my opinion, this is not addressing the problem that is perceived to exist here. Okay. I mean, asking, depending on, I, we're talking about, the difference that we're talking about here is between uh, calls, <clears throat> excuse me, calls for service and the ability for an ambulance to get to somebody should they need it. So people on the north end of town typically wait a long time. And I know Nancy said last time that we were talking that she's never in, in her years as a firefighter experienced a delay. But um, at least two of my neighbors have um, talked to me about uh, at least 30 minute delays in response waiting for an ambulance to get there because they needed to be taken to the hospital. And the fire department and the police department can't transport them. So that's, that's the crux of the issue as far as I'm concerned, is the ability for an ambulance to get to people on the north end. When the ambulance is coming from Dogwood Trail, the people south of town don't really have an issue. They, the ambulance gets there. It's when they have to go all the way through town and then get to the north end of town that that's when it becomes an issue. And so as far as I'm concerned, this does not address the issue at hand. <clears throat> the issue right. as, as I remember it being discussed on June 3rd was that we would no, go ahead, Chris. Was, was that we were to come back with, with a policy related to, or a, a plan uh, to deal with high volume days where the ambulances would have a, a harder time and could see more delays going north. That, that's, what we came, that's what we came back with. Yeah. Well, I, th I, again, think county I, manager I understand that's what you've come back with, but nonetheless, in my opinion, it does not address the problem. County Manager Thotten is likely to address that, and maybe you can talk a little bit about the logistics of sure. the two ambulances on Dogwood. Hi, Mr. Allen. How are you doing? Mike. The one we didn't test. <laughs> Sorry about that. Are we good? Okay. And, in, and, a, and the fire truck goes and comes and stays within that precinct. Our precinct in Dare County is all of Dare County. And so we have our stations set up throughout Dare County. And when we get calls, we deploy from whatever the station is. We have a captain who redeploys. So let's just use the Southern Shore Station. If they get a call, and we've got one ambulance sitting there, they go out on that call, whether it's in Duck or whether it's to the south. When that happens, the captain then gets online and redeploys the whole ambulance system to spread the remaining ambulances out over the county to maximize uh, or minimize our response times. And, and so in the summertime with this plan, what we found is on Saturdays, then we have some difficulty getting north uh, from Southern Shores, and so the idea would be we'll place a truck in, in Duck on those high traffic days to try to mitigate the traffic problems that we have. But you have to understand that having that truck in Duck is good for one call, the first call. So as soon as that truck goes out on a call, whether it's in the south of the town or the north of the town, it's out of town and it's out of service for the length of that call, which could be a half a day to a day, depending on what's going on. At that point, all the ambulances in the whole system are redeployed and spread out again, again, to, to try to get them in a place to go. And so you don't ever put your ambulance in the furthest south or the furthest north, because then you can only respond in one direction. So you're trying to, again, maximize your time. As you then plan for your resources going forward, you, you look at your response times, and, and you mentioned those, and then you look at the volume of calls that you get that require a response time that's less than that. A, a fish hook in your hand or a cut doesn't require the same response time that a heart attack or a stroke does. And so as you look at your response times, you're, you're trying to mitigate those. And then when you deploy your resources, 
they're limited. We don't have enough resources to put multiple trucks in multiple places every so many miles. We have them where we have them and we have a limited number. And so we look at where do we best place those people based on the response times and the call volumes we get and the type of calls that we get and where are they clustered. And so that's how we've got our system set up. Um, and while, yes, it would take longer to get to Northern Duck uh, from Southern Shores on a Saturday, hopefully by doing what we're doing on a Saturday, we'll solve some of that. But on a day in February, the response time isn't gonna change that much. When you start looking at allocating resources, there are other places in the county that have greater call volumes, worse response times, and more problems that have to associate. So if you're gonna start spending resources to buy new trucks, build new stations, do whatever you do, then you're gonna look at your other problem areas first, and Duck isn't one of those. Um, you know, you, there are places that have worse response times. I mean, Stumpy Point has much worse response time, but it doesn't have any calls. And so we, we would think about building an EMS station or deploying an, e, uh, an ambulance necessarily in, in Stumpy Point because it doesn't get enough volumes to justify it and it's needed to meet calls in Duck or in Southern Shores or in the Kill Devil Hills cluster in Agshead where we have volumes of calls. So, there's somebody that works on that all the time, and each time there's a call, everything gets spread back out to do that. So when you talk about, first, our, our relationships with not only with Duck, but with all the towns are good. And, and if Duck needed us to have an ambulance here for an event or whatever, then we do that. That's routinely done. We don't have an agreement. We just do it because that's what we do. Um, and so there aren't any issues with that. And similarly, where we perceive there's an issue, uh, I'll just use uh, bad weather. Um, when the road floods there in Southern Shores, or used to flood, it, you may have gotten that resolved, but, um, we would station an ambulance to the north of that so that we didn't have to deal with that, at least on one way going back, when we knew that was gonna happen because of bad weather. So we try to, deploy and redeploy, and any time that we would have asked Donna, hey, we need to put an ambulance up there because there's something going on, for example, the road being out with the flood, there's no question, there's never been, no, you can't do that. Um, and so we figure it out and we do it. So yeah, there are, there are opportunities where we would request to be there because we know mm -hmm. something's come going or something's happening. And then there are times when you all need us because you have things going on in the community and you ask us, to do that and we would do that. And frankly, we would do either of those things with or without an agreement. So that, at least from our perspective, hasn't been an issue. Um, if there are issues with your two neighbors, for example, with a long call volume, that could mean a lot of things for those two neighbors. It could mean that, you know, we've got 15 ambulances deployed and we've got eight of them out on calls and we've got to take the other seven and spread them out throughout the county. And when we do that, we may be deploying from Kill Devil Hills to get to Duck in that situation because we have all the Southern Shores ambulances or the other ambulances out somewhere else and we've had to move them and we took a Kill Devil Hills ambulance and maybe put it in Southern Shores but we couldn't go north of Southern Shores because then it wouldn't have the ability to respond back to the south if the next call came there. And so it's a juggling act that we do all day long to move those units around um, to do that and as I say, putting an ambulance in duck doesn't solve any of that because it's only good for one call. The first call that it makes, it's out, and then we're back into our juggling act again. So. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I would say, I would argue that it does a lot of good for the person who gets that first call. I'm sorry? It, it does a lot of good for the very the I, person that absolutely. gets that first call. You're, you're I mean, I, right. I understand that, I, believe me, I understand intimately how AMS systems work and they have to juggle things around. Um, the point is that I think uniquely, um, and I'm not as familiar with places like Collington, maybe as I should be, but the, the, the traffic volume and the one way in and the one way out of Duck, I think presents a unique problem that doesn't exist in a lot of other places in the county. Our goal is to minimize our response times throughout the county. So. We would love to do whatever we can do to minimize our response times everywhere. Um, however, we have a, we have 
we have a plan, a, a capital improvement plan, uh, that we had architects come down and study our system and do all that. And it's about three years old, and it's about a $12 million or greater, probably more than that now, plan to rebuild, remodel, replace all the things we need to do to our EMS stations. Um, it was in this year's capital improvement plan. Everything's been pushed back a year because of the COVID, and so we're now at a year from revisiting that in Dare County. Uh, in that plan, the idea of building new stations, Duck wasn't included in that plan, not because no one looked or cared about Duck, but because when you're looking at a finite number of resources, yes, that first call, it would make a difference to that person, but the first call would make a difference to that person somewhere else as well, and it costs us about a million dollars a unit when you add in the purchase of the ambulance, you add in the staff that you got to have to run the ambulance, all the equipment you do. And so do you invest that million dollars for that first call in duck or do you invest that million dollars somewhere else where it can respond to three or four calls because there's a cluster there and you have a greater call volume? And the answer is you take your resources and you divide them up as best you can to, to minimize that and they've got they can run you know, GIS, call maps, call volumes, call types. All of those things get done, and our EMS director then decides where and when we deploy ambulances and what we do and how we're recommended to build things as we go into the future. And so, and that's what we've done here. Um, and yes, it would be great to have an EMS station every you know five miles or eight miles and a truck in it and all that stuff, but our resources don't allow that and so within the resources that we now have we are stationed and we have our trucks and we have our people where they are and, and you know absent going further than that we, we can't go beyond that uh, and then if we were if we were going to budget another million dollars or another two million dollars is that where we would put it and right now that is not what the response times and all the data would suggest is that we put it here it would suggest that we put it further to the south where there's a bigger cluster of calls. So that's what our EMS data tells us. That's what our EMS director has recommended to us. Um, we do recognize the traffic problems on the weekends on the change days and we want to address that and we will address that with them. And, and if you all are ready, we're ready, we'll, we'll have an ambulance there right away. And I think Donna said they've already talked through that. So that will happen um, again. That'll be good for the first call, and then we'll, we'll be in our juggling act again, so. I guess, Bobby, we'd assume that, if, I, I don't know if you're on the two trucks out of, of Dogwood or not, but if the one truck is up here in Duck and the other one gets deployed, then the one in Duck would probably go back down to Dogwood? It would. If, yeah. if, if we got a truck, if we had a truck in Duck and we have a truck at Dogwood, and the Dogwood truck gets deployed, then we'd look at where are the Kill Devil Hills trucks, and we would probably move the duck truck south and a Kill Devil Hills truck north to try to split the difference so that our call time. I mean, we've had them sitting in a parking lot somewhere sometime waiting on the next call to try to get it in the right place so that we could respond to those calls more quickly than having to sit in a station somewhere. That's not ideal, but that's what we do. And thank you so much for being here and uh, going over this. How many trucks are on the uh, in, are deployed at any given time, like on a normal day? Is it 11, 15? Uh, 11 to 15, depending oh. <laughs> on, yeah, you're right on it. Uh, it gets. Okay. And then uh, um, do you, uh, does the, does Chief Collins or somebody in the, that department go through the data and look at things all the time or is it re reviewed monthly for response times and is that data public and I um, mean is there the things data, The data can be made public. I mean I can get you, the, if you're looking for the data I can probably get it and get somebody to compile it and put it together. If you're asking me do I have a chart mm -hmm. on my desk, no I don't have no, that, no. but I can get that. Um, and yes, she goes through it, with, whether it's monthly or daily or whatever, but we, we have to do our, our capital improvement plan every year. And every year when we look at EMS, one of the things we look at is, okay, where are we? What do we need to do? Uh, when we look at our budget, we're at, what do we need to do with staff? We have a, a staffing plan that grows our EMS. Um, again, COVID has slowed everything down because we, we had planned 
over multiple three to five years to add staff, add trucks, to enhance what we've done, but we haven't been able to follow the plan because the revenues haven't been there to do that. So, but yes, we, we do look at that. I don't know that we look at it weekly or daily, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions for Manager Alden? Again, we're here to help, so if you have questions, it's okay to call me. Uh, you can call me at my office, I'm glad to talk to you. Um, and again, we don't have any incentives not to try to do what we can do to make response times better, and, and that's what Jenny's job is, Chief Collins' job is, and so she's juggling those things at, all the time. And, and our board and, and I you know, take our guidance from her, she's the expert, and, and she, she has those maps and she works with our GS, GIS people to look at that data to see how and where and when we need to do things and how many people we need and how many trucks we need and all those kinds of things. So, Are we gonna, just a question I guess for, for both of you, are we gonna, are we gonna start this effective immediately and, and are we doing it every day or on demand or weekends or? So when I talked to Chief Collins originally, we were gonna try, we'll, we'll look at Saturdays and Sundays to start, and then um, if we have a rainy day in the middle of the week, again, whenever we think it's necessary. So we'll lay out guidelines with uh, the firefighters, we'll track it so we, we can come back with you, and I'll report to the town manager, we'll track that. And, um, but yeah, we'll start Saturday, so this weekend. Uh, and then, you know, if, if for whatever reason there's no traffic, then we may redeploy. I mean, we always, we will redeploy to maximize yeah. uh, our, our effort and minimize our response times. And so, because we have it here this Saturday, we might not have it here some other Saturday because the traffic doesn't warrant it or we put them there and the traffic doesn't warrant it and we move it or, or they get a call, which is more likely and, and then they move it anyway, so. Bobby, while you're here, I'd like to ask a question since sure. we have the benefit of you being here. Thank you. So with your capital improvements plan and, you know, looking into the future after COVID, um, if you did add more buses and staff and you were looking at, um, you know, a new station or new locations in the county, what would, what would that process look like? Um, well, first it would come from a recommendation from Chief Collins as to where we do. Um, Kitty Hall, for example, is getting ready to build a new station and we have an opportunity to put a station there. Uh, that has been evaluated. What would that do to response times if we had the trucks and we redeployed them? What could we do? What would that do to benefit Duck? What would that do? And so we're looking at that mm -hmm. and that's an opportunity for us to, to do something there. Um, we have issues, you mentioned the Collington area, we have issues in the Collington area, we have a big permanent population there um, that is, again, on the extremes. The, the extremes are always the problems because it's when you have your hub, as you deploy out, you can get to the areas near the hub, but on the extremes, it takes longer to get to the extremes, obviously. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the negative is if you put your stations on the extremes, then you've limited your response to one direction. You, you, if you're on the far north or the far south, you can only go north or south. You can't go in both directions, and so you've limited your response capability. And so typically when you plan your stations, you don't plan them, you try to center them in your response areas, and so you, mm -hmm. and, and that's the kind of juggling and planning that you'll do. And then on top of that, you've got to look at you know the availability of land and where can you put a station and what can you do, and the availability of land and the optimal place for the station, at least now, don't jive very often. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Any additional questions for the manager? Well, thank you, Bobby. Right. Appreciate you attending. Thank you for having me. Again, very any nice. questions you have, let me know. We will. Thank okay. you so much. Bobby. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Black. Go on to item number two, discussion consideration of authorizing the town manager to execute a contract with Coastal Protection Engineering of North Carolina, Inc. for design and environmental permitting services, 2022 Beach Nourishment Project. Chris? Thank you. Uh, so as you all know, we, we have been uh, working with 
Coastal Protection Engineering, um, we went through an RFQ process and Council previously approved two, con two contracts with Coastal Protection Engineering um, uh, a month or so ago. This is the, this is the big, uh, this is the big contract which is related to um, the beach nourishment project in 2022. And this project includes everything from the permitting to the engineering design, um, some additional sand search area, um, and uh, everything we needed to do in order to do the last project. Um, all the coordination with the agencies, uh, and we. We really want to get this started, um, you know, a couple years before with the anticipated uh, project start date so that we have enough time to work through all those projects, um, all those items. The, um, in conjunction with Southern Shores now, um, uh, Kitty Hawk and Kill Devil Hills, um, uh, where those costs um, can be shared, they are shared in the contract. Um, and uh, for, you know, for example, some of the sand searching, some of the permitting items, those are all things that, that can be shared. When it comes down to the actual design, that is the, that's going to be really specific town to town because every town's design is going to be, uh, going to be different. Um, uh, Kitty Hawk and Kill Devil Hills have approved their contracts. Uh, Southern Shores is expected to approve theirs in July, um, and so this contract is is before you now. Um, it's going to be a, a multi-fiscal year uh, contract, so you'll see reappropriations of this money as we go forward. But um, the total cost of the project uh, is three hundred ninety-eight thousand four hundred ninety-one dollars and seventy-five cents, and this project. The funding for this project would be would come from the capital reserve fund, um, and you have a budget amendment uh, further down in the in in the agenda, which would uh, officially approve this or officially appropriate the money. Chris, would some of the costs up front be shared equally between the towns? As an example, I know Southern Shore is looking to do their whole beach. Uh, I think they're getting a recommendation they don't need to do their whole beach, but um, will some of those upfront costs? be just equally divided by four, or will they be divided by effort, you know? The, most of the costs are gonna be divided equally because the shared costs are going to be those items that are sort of universal in the permitting process. So there are biological opinions, things of that nature that are gonna be the same throughout the project area. And so those, you know, getting the data for those the, and, and, and doing the, that permitting um, is all gonna be spread. Um, individual, things that are, are specific to each town's project itself um, is, is gonna be divided by the town. So additional, pro, whatever profile surveys, whatever additional items like that, um, that's, those are items that don't lend themselves to being shared. We, we don't wanna pay for Southern Shores design, Southern Shores doesn't wanna pay for our design. Um, and uh, so those costs are gonna be very specific. Kind of following up on that question, um, did they propose these prices before they knew Southern Shores was getting involved, or uh, will they were, there be any cost we, savings? We anticipated, we anticipated Southern Shores being in, being involved with this. So, okay. and it, it, there's no timeline yet associated. They've not developed a timeline for these activities. No, not yet, not yet. Okay. And we'll be uh, we'll be putting a working group together. Um, and hope to meet early July, but a working group together of, of all the towns, even Nags Head and in the county, just so that uh, when I say a working group, it's just to share the information to make sure we're all on the same page in terms of, um, you know, in terms of the, the projects, but also where there may be other opportunities to share um, in, in sand search or, or cost. Um, uh, we want to be able to talk through those issues as well. Thank you. So it's a one a one year contract for the twelve, the, and we'll get monthly reports, and that's going to start when everybody agrees yeah, to it. Yeah. Well, I would anticipate that they'll be diving into it, um, you know, early, early in the early in the process. Uh, I mean, early in the fiscal year. Um, 
you know, perhaps not as early as, you may not get a, a report in July, but um, I would expect August, September, um, I'll start getting reports. Got it. John? I have a question. Monica just asked if that was a one-year contract. This is the complete contract, isn't it? Yeah, it's the, com it's the complete contract. But I mean, um, they're anticipating 12 Yeah, they're anticipating, com they're, they're anticipating that it will take 12 months, but, um, uh, which would pull us through the fiscal year. But, um, but a lot, some of that may be dictated by actual permitting and, and, and what we get back. We're, our, our hope is that, you know, by the time we hit this, this period next year that we'll be in a bidding phase, um, if not through a bidding phase, um, so. Chris, do you think that they'll be at a place come retreat time to do a sort of an update? Oh, oh absolutely. Great. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, authorize the town manager to execute a contract with Coastal Protection Engineering of North Carolina Incorporated for the design and environmental permitting services as presented. Any further discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mayor Pro Temp, Monica Thibodeau. Aye. Council Member Rob Mooney. Aye. Council Member Sandy Whitman. Aye. Council Member Nancy Kavinis. Aye. A Mayor, Pro Temp, a Mayor Don Kingston. Aye. Motion passes five to zero. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Item number three, discussion consideration of authorizing the town manager to execute a grant agreement with the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation for the North Duck Village Living Shoreline. Chris. Thank you. So NIFWIF, um, which is much easier to say than uh, National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, um, is, is um, a nonprofit. It's not a federal agency, so I don't want you to confuse it with um, na you know, National Fish and Wildlife. Um, and uh, we received this grant, as you all know, or we re received notice that we, w we had been awarded this grant for our Living Shoreline Project. Um, in the area between, uh, in the area between uh, Sunset Grill and Resort Realty. Um, we are continuing to work uh, on the permitting associated with that, um, and uh, that, is going, um, that is going well, uh, and we expect that we'll be able to work through some of the issues um, in enough time to get uh, this project uh, bid out uh, in conjunction with the uh, with the pedestrian improvements in that area uh, later this later this summer, uh, late summer, early fall, with construction uh, hopefully beginning in uh, in the, the the mid to late fall. Um, as part of this, we need to approve the agreement. We need to execute the agreement for the three hundred and eighty six thousand. Um, what's the exact number? Three eighty four, three hundred and eighty four thousand and eleven dollars, um, and twenty five uh, And uh, it is a fifty fifty match, and so we are um, we are required to to match that dollar for dollar. Um, and so uh, you know, so our our match is is going to be uh, the same amount. It is included in the budget that you all have looked at, um, and uh, and. We have been, uh, I think it's safe to say, we have been uh, implored to get this contract to them uh, as quickly as possible, and, and, and frankly, I've sat on it until we at least got through some of the budget discussion uh, before you all um, approved it, and so uh, that's where the timing comes from for this project. Um, you all are aware of, of what we're trying to achieve, um, and uh, uh, I put it forward to you to, um, to authorize me to execute. I have a question. So Chris, I had a question about the grant. So if we defer, the, if we have to defer the project because of budget, you know, will we be able to pause the, the grant? Like, do you know if this agency is one that would sort of hold the grant for us? I, would we risk losing it? I think like most agencies, um, uh, 
we, we would have the ability to request an extension. I can't okay. stand here and tell you yeah. that it's guaranteed we would be granted, but if we had you know, good rationale, they would consider that as, as a possibility. Okay. okay, thanks, Joan. Yeah. The only question I had was, did we have our attorney look over the contract as well? I looked at it. It's part of the agenda, yes. Okay, I didn't thanks. see any problems. I figure you did because it's a lot of money and a contract that we've not seen before, I don't think. So, thank you. Robert, did you say you had looked at it or would I have. not? Yep. Yes, sir, I have. I mean, I didn't see any problems. Any other questions for Chris or Joe? There being none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion, unless you want to, Sandy. Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, authorize the town manager to execute a grant agreement with the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation for the North Duck Village Living Shoreline. Any further discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Thibodeau? Aye. Councilman Mooney? Aye. Councilman Whitman? Aye. Councilman Cavinis? Aye. The mayor votes aye. Motion passes five to zero. Thank you, Chris and Joe. Thank you. Item number four, certain budget amendments. Once again, Chris. So this is housekeeping, uh, budget amendments. The, <clears throat> what we're doing is we're appropriating revenues from the sale of uh, vehicles and surplus equipment uh, for the purchase of uh, the, the two vehicles the council approved at the last uh, council meeting, one for the police department, one for inspections, and then uh, uh, approving the transfer of the $398,000 and $492 from the, um, from the cap Beach Fund Capital Reserve to, uh, you know, to professional services um, in the beach protection. So it takes care of all the, all the, uh, all the budgetary requirements for, uh, for dispersing those funds. Any questions for Chris on the budget amendment? There being none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve budget amendments as presented. Any further discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none. We'll do a roll call vote. Mayor Pro Tem Thibodeau? Aye. Council Member Rooney? Mooney. Aye. Council Member Whitman? <coughs> aye. Council Member Cavanis? Aye. The mayor votes aye. The motion passes five to zero. Thank you, Chris. Item number five, the full year 2021 budget workshop session. Uh, before I turn it over to Chris for some opening comments and discussion, uh, some of the things that we, in fact, were going to discuss further today is the MSDs. Uh, the CIP, uh, there's a question on occupancy and on the uh, inclusion of the multi-use path in Sanderling. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Chris. All right, thank you. So, previously I provided, um, or yesterday I provided council uh, two sheets, um, and those are gonna be the sheets that, that I plan to work off of just to um, just to begin the discussions. Um, first thing, uh, one of the questions that, that came up, and I was um, I was tongue tied, was uh, the cable access channel funding and where was that located? And the answer to that is it's in the utility franchise tax. Um, and uh, I apologize. Sometimes all the numbers start running together to me. Um, but that's where, that's where the uh, source of that funding comes from. And utility franchise tax is, um, is, a, is a tax on, it's essentially a property tax, um, but it also includes, um, it's a tax on all the utilities in the area, so cable, infrastructure, um, telephone poles, those, all that kind of stuff um, is, is, is taxed uh, and goes to the state as, and then is distributed uh, to the town, and it now includes uh, the cable franchise uh, as well, and so that's where that that's where that pass-through money occurs. So just starting from the just starting from the the first sheet, um, one of the things I was I was tasked with was reevaluating 
the, uh, the shared revenues uh, in really taking some of my uh, less optimistic views and seeing if, uh, seeing if um, there was reason to be more optimistic uh, with the way things seem to be going now for the summer. And I did that, um, and uh, and and feel feel comfortable that uh, there is some additional money that that we could budget related to to those items. So, um, so if you look down at the at the shared revenue, sales tax transfer, and occupancy, um, I was willing to go up. Uh, with my models, uh, a hair on uh, on sales tax. Um, one of the issues with sales tax is obviously even even in the pandemic, people were still buying I mean, mostly toilet paper, I guess, but they were still buying a lot of stuff, and so we were getting you know we were getting sales tax. So there's not not much to be gleaned uh, from additional from that. But um, but I did uh, look at the historical data. Did. Um, Checked some things and, and felt comfortable, you know, taking that up a notch. Uh, transfer tax—that's um, too much of an unknown for me, and I didn't want to—I didn't want to be overly aggressive with that. So I—I didn't make any. I'm not recommending any changes there. Occupancy tax—you um, know—I think there's—I think there's reason to be more aggressive with that. Um, uh, I, I didn't feel comfortable um, with models that showed a, us getting over $100,000 in revenue, but I, I was comfortable with, with the models and, and some of the assumptions uh, that, that showed us um, uh, getting a sizable increase over what I was originally proposing. Um, my philosophy, as you all who've worked with me for, for a while know, is that um, I tend to be more conservative on the revenue side and and equally conservative on the on the expenditure side because I don't like um, ending the year in the red um, and so I try to try to engineer the budget so that doesn't happen. Um, I don't think that uh, while this is perhaps more um, uh, more aggressive than I might be, um, I'm still reasonably comfortable uh, with the number. So, uh, and then utility franchise tax, I, I feel very comfortable going up um, some additional on that. Um, and so, bottom line is, um, if the council wishes to to, to add um, a hundred thousand dollars in the to to address um, additional multi-use path sidewalk in the Sanderling area, um, I think we can I think we can make that work. Um, and so what the what what these proposed changes include are all the changes that I, I spoke about previously. So the reduction in the general fund ad valorem um, and the 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 requisite or the um, the the needed cuts on the on the uh, expenditure side to make up for that fifty eight thousand Eight hundred fourteen dollar difference plus um, plus an additional hundred thousand um, to do the to do this to do the extra sidewalk in the Sanderling area. Um, so I I was asked to to come up with a plan to do that, and that's what this does. Now the highlighted areas here are MSDs, and um, and that's will be the next focus of, of your discussion. Um, the and those numbers will be, I mean, that's going to be a, a, a strict transfer, so it doesn't, it, it, it's not going to change anything, uh, anything else. It's just going to be a, a, an in and out, as the mayor would say. Um, I was also asked to look at, um, you know, rounding up. Um, and so the, the bo very bottom, no, not that one. Um, yeah. The very bottom is just, if you went up to 1.97, you know, you're looking at $11,000. Um, I was, in my discussions with the mayor, um, you know, uh, I was asked to look at 1 point, 1, 1.1975, and I just didn't get time to, to actually run those numbers, but... Um, you can uh, kind of see that there's about yeah, 10 or Yeah, I wanted to, I, I, I figured, um, let you all see what the... Um, you know how much additional, which 
it, it's not a lot when we get, when we go up. But my rationale in, in discussion that with Chris was it's just easier to talk about quarter cents, like you know 19 and three quarters versus some odd number when we talk about it, and it's cents to give it in dollars. But you know, as we, you know, I think in past years we've always kind of rounded to the nearest quarter cent. And that was my rationale there. Oh, okay. So, it would, so we could infer that it would give you another, you know, twelve to thirteen, fourteen thousand, yeah. maybe close to yeah, twenty-five, max. if you if yeah. you round it up to nineteen and three quarters. Yeah. Could I ask a quick question Surely. about the um, reduction in the parks and um, miscellaneous events? Was that strictly due to event cutting, or could you speak to that? Yes. Um, it, it's. We know July events are done. Um, and uh, we don't know about August. We don't know about the Jazz Festival. But, uh, but if, if we were to make a decision today, um, uh, we probably would defer on those and, and wouldn't go forward. So we okay. feel like we have, we have the funding there um, it, that it's not going to hamstring us if we, okay, if we great. take that. I, I know you brought that up when you were going over the numbers before, so I wasn't sure if it was additional cuts, but those no, were just no, sort this of— is the same. The, okay. This is an additional. This is, is what I proposed previously plus what it would take to get to the extra 100000 Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you. Any other questions on this sheet? All right. So um, I wish there was a way to make these sheets less complicated. Um, and, uh, and Allison, if you can blow that up. Um, what I tried to do was um, take what what the council had, the information I got from the council and kind of uh, take a second look at, at some of these, um, at some of the, the options um, and, uh, and, and see if there was a, uh, any kind of consensus about where we go from here or what else you might want to look at. Um, I want to start first just to sort of get everyone's head around uh, um, this sheet, I want to start all the way at the bottom. So what I tried to do is just try to do kind of a graphic timeline so that everyone, to help people understand sort of how these decisions are, how, how these decisions are sort of affect the, the, um, the fiscal years. And so starting in FY 2021, um, we would adopt a, 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 a new MSD rate, um, and that rate would be in effect for a minimum. I mean, the council can adjust it every year, but but um, hypothetically, that would be in place for five years, um, and would be based on spreading it out five years. At which point, the council, as you're doing now, would then have to. Uh, Take a take a look at where you want those rates to be for the next project, and we would go and you would adopt something, and it would carry out uh, for another five years. Um, what we expect is um, somewhere in FY 22, FY 23 is when we would actually issue debt. So this could, you know, this could move slightly, but. Um, we expect right now that, it w that the debt would be issued in FY 2022, probably late 2022, with the idea that the project is gonna going to occur in either the spring of 2022 or the summer of 2022. Um, and if it's in the summer of 2022, that's likely going to be in the summer or the fall of 2022. That's going to be FY 2023. So it, it gets a little confusing, but um, that's why I have those two marked. Um, either way, we would expect that um, the debt payments to, to, to start sometime in FY 2023, and then those debt payments would go on for two years. So, um, so if you look at the MSDs adopted at adopted rate, you see there's two fiscal years, so that would be two years of MSD collection before we would have a debt payment. Um, similarly, in FY 26 and 27, we would anticipate um, we would anticipate collecting two years worth of MSDs before we would have a debt payment. Um, 
the other thing I wanted to point out here is that each of these models at some level have a town contribution. The town contribution wouldn't kick in until we actually started paying debt. So, um, so it would impact um, the debt payments uh, or the town contribution would be in line with the debt payments and would be, um, I'm marking that because that can have, a, in some cases, that could have a significant effect on, uh, on the town's bottom line. Um, uh, and so I want to note those because the town contribution um, under some of these models uh, is significant and, um, and, and would impact um, uh, the town's bottom line in those areas. So I just wanted to go over a, a sort of a kind of a schedule to sort of help people understand when key moments are. Could I just clarify something? Uh -huh. The blue line is simply a new MSD rate for ongoing maintenance of yes. the product project. Correct. Thank you. Correct. It assumes that, you know, I, I did it like that because it assumes the council will once again, and nothing prevents the council from doing it every year, but this, this would be a new project with new, you know, with new um, estimates and, you know, so council, at the very minimum, council would have to reevaluate it at that point and, um, and uh, decide what direction you want to take. It's, it speaks to the fact that the project is, has ongoing maintenance. Correct. Chris, now in the existing project, the town contribution is two years behind the MSD's initial contribution, correct? So in other words, we started yes. paying once the bonds were issued, so... Yes. And then we go two years beyond the MSD's, current MSD's. Correct. Okay. All right, so... Um, understand that? You understand that? Yeah. yeah. So we're still paying... Yeah. We have two more right. years... Right. Of the contribution of, the, of, the, of, the, of, of the, our original contribution up here at yes. the top of the page, the 18 percent. Yes. All right. So, um, so if you start, what I tried to do was uh, bring everything back to um, estimated costs and the total distribution, um, and and really sort of try to get. Um, everyone on the same page of, uh, of the implications of that. So felt like I, I needed to start with how the original project, how the percentage of payments and, and, and that sort of thing started. So if you look at the top, the original, uh, what we originally debted out was um, or is $7,349,582. Of that, um, the town uh, pays 18 percent. Um, the county kicks in an additional 15 percent. Um, and then uh, MSDA would be 43 percent of the, of the remaining cost, and MSDB, 24 percent of the cost. Now, this is just the, I want, to keep, I want you to keep in mind, this is just the debt. So um, the original, the actual project cost was, you know, was 15 million and change. And so the county took a portion off, off the top of that. And this is what was remaining with interest and everything. So that's the way it, it, it was, it, it played out. So in the next scenario, what I did was I said, okay, taking the worst case scenario that we don't get any the worst case scenario at this point, uh, which is that we don't get any uh, FEMA funding and we don't get any uh, grant funding, uh, then we would have to enter into debt of an estimate of $6,210,644. So if we kept the same distribution and said, okay, MSD and MSDB um, are still going to pay their percentage, and then the town's going to assume not only its percentage, but also make up the county percentage, which would be 33 percent. What would end up playing out would be the town um, would be on the hook for uh, $409,903 per, per year once the debt payments kicked in. Um, MSDA, um, which again is, is uh, everyone in the project area, including Oceanfront, 
would be on the hook for $534,115, and MSDB, which is just oceanfront, would be on the hook for $298,111. And then you can see what the, the average levy would be under those scenarios and the difference. So, um, so the town, uh, I, I, I didn't calculate it for the town, um, but our, our proportion would go up uh, significantly because we're taking on that additional 15%. Um, but the um, MSDA would see uh, uh, a difference of negative 121, and MSDB would see a, a, a difference of negative 459. So that's original distribution. Um, next would be a scenario which is if we, if we just calculated um, the contribution, if we kept the revenue neutral rate this, for the MSDs and, uh, and, then, and then the town's contribution would come from that, that's the next scenario. So the same, the same uh, worst case scenario, the town's portion goes down to 20%, so 13% difference. Uh, MSDA would be 52%, MSDB 28%. Um, five year, uh, you can see that the town would be on the hook for $247.86 estimated. estimated. Um, MSDA 643,581, MSDB 351,462. Um, you see the rates there, which are the equalized rates, um, and then the difference would be an additional $18 on average for MSDA and an additional $59 in, in MSDB. So then I took uh, Monica's suggestion and put it at 25%, um, right in the middle. Uh, not by design, but just by happenstance. And you can see how those numbers played out. So at, if the town were to contribute 25%, uh, it, would, it would bump the town's contribution uh, to $310,532 per year once the debt kicks in. Uh, MSDA would be $596,222, MSDB $335,375, and so you see a slight reduction in the, the, the rates, um, MSDA 12.01, MSDB 27.2 uh, cents, and you can see that it's a difference of negative 42 for MSDA and negative 97 for MSDB. And then finally, just as a, just as a, as a, another example, this is what I originally proposed. Um, and this proposal is based on us rolling the dice in the, the, the town getting um, essentially one of the grants. So we're getting some money, uh, uh, we're getting some money from, uh, right. from two sources, maybe a little bit of money from each, but we're, we're getting something to help defer, defray the cost. It also assumes that the, that the town would only pay the interest, the, so the town would only pay the interest from the general fund, and the MSDs would, would split the cost 50-50. So under this scenario, um, the town would pay 6%, and then it would be 47% for MSDA and MSDB. Um, annually, the town would kick in $40,309. MSDA would be responsible for $335,910. MSDB, $335,910. Um, and then the difference on the levies would be MSDA would see a, a savings of negative 373 and, uh, and $92 for MSDB. Again, one thing to remember is that um, Oceanfront property owners would get both of those numbers, so either in the in would either uh, pay an additional combined or uh, save a uh, additional combined because the oceanfront owners are in both MSDA and MSDB. So then, what I did was um, just showed what the you know what the impact would be. Everything else staying the same. Um, Shared revenues changing accordingly, 
Um, so there's some differences in shared revenues um, and what the bottom lines would be. And, and none of the scenarios when we hit FY2023 through FY2026 do we have, um, do we have a, a, are we in the black? Um, and that's, it's very simple reasons for that. Not only, not only uh, additionally, are we um, are we are we paying additional in, in most cases than what we are now with uh, with the with the debt from beach nourishment, but also included in here is estimated timelines and in, in debts and CIP related to um, the public safety building. Um, the uh, additional fire truck at some point. Um, and so all those are, are very, are, I mean, all those are, are very elastic in terms of when they hit, what, they, what, what amounts they'll be, and, and, and in some cases, even if projects will um, continue in that timeline. But, um, but it gives you, gives you an, an indication of what those impacts would be coming down the line. Um, and, uh, and one thing we can be sure of is that um, the additional estimates and shared revenues don't um, don't totally mitigate the town's contribution, if that makes sense, um, for the beach nourish like for the beach nourishment. We're we're not gonna we're not um, if we're paying four hundred nine thousand dollars, we're not gonna get that additional in in shared revenues back. Um, and so those are just those are just kind of the facts, and um, and and uh, the hard part is, you know, how how you you know how you want to proceed in sort of divvying this up. So I'm glad to answer any questions on this on this scenario, and um, and I would uh, I would reemphasize the fact that. Um, we have until June 30th to adopt the budget. <laughs> the sand is going down the hourglass, right? Mm -hmm. to, to I fully get that last block, the effects on the budget, which I greatly appreciate pushing out these many years, so 2000, fiscal year 2026, that is including a fully funded CIP. Is that what you that's just correct. said? That's correct, okay. yes. So that's all the all of it in, in the mix, including what we're looking at here in terms of the, uh, the money spent on nourishment. Just sure. In the, just forecasting. Exactly. Thank you. This is all very helpful. Thank you very much. Well, I think I've been on the record, Chris, is, is I agree with, I guess I'll call it the second scenario there, the revenue neutral rate from a standpoint of it doesn't take into account grants that we may get, so they could be on the upside, but it does cover what we anticipate the cost of renourishment to be, and it also kind of keeps the MSDs consistent with what they've been paying in the past in that it's going to be a revenue neutral rate. And I think we have an upside opportunity in the, the next four years beyond if, in fact, we do get those grants to lower those rates. But I would hate to go on with artificially lowered rates and then have to raise the rates knowing that, in fact, we're not getting the grants and we are going to have to, in fact, cover that cost. And I think it's also reasonable, the 20 percent for the town, because there could be an upside potential for the town on that also. So, you know, going into next year, I really, I support the, uh, the, the, the second scenario there of basically the revenue neutral rates. And the town expenditures also are delayed two years. so. That also helps the town financials from a standpoint of what it's going to be. And that's my two cents. No pun intended on the sense. <laughs> Is that rounded? That's <laughs> rounded, right. <laughs> um. Should have said advice five cents. <laughs> Anybody else is, should weigh in on their comments with respect to these various scenarios? Oh, I, I, I feel the same way Don does on the revenue neutral rates. You know, why go in the hole any farther than we have to? I concur. Revenue neutral. 
I just, I, I know that when we did all of the original projections when we first went into this project, uh, we expected that the maintenance of this project would be a lower MSD for our taxpayers. And I'm sensitive to that. I also know there were no guarantees, as there are no guarantees with the grants. And the project has been impacted by Dorian as well as, let's face it, the weather's not been that great for a while with the northeast winds. And every time the blows, I think about our poor beaches. I could go with either the, I, would, I, I do sort of like the 25% based on the fact that the town has a lot of skin in the game and, you know, but it's amazing to me the differences. I mean, you're looking at amounts, just the difference between a, a person in MSDA of, of $18 more on the revenue neutral, for example. This is average, so it's not going to hit everybody the same way versus, you know, negative 42, so, you know, a $60 swing per taxpayer makes up, makes quite a difference on our, um, on the town. Um, and so I'm, I'm torn, I'll be honest. I, I, I think I, I'd like to be optimistic and think we are going to get some grants. And so if, if it prevails that it's the revenue neutral, then I think the first place that the, that the grant relief should go would be to the MSD's bottom line as opposed to the towns. Uh, but that's, that's very speculative. So I don't know. I'm, it, it is a big difference to go from, I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning for the 25% personally for the reasons I've mentioned. Um, it's not a huge difference for the taxpayers, but it's something. Um, it does put the town a little bit more on the hook I agree, but um, anyway, that's that's how I'm feeling right now. I agree with Monica. I think I think that our responsibility here is to try to help these people a little bit. Um, uh, as you said, it's speculative to to guess about the the grant money, but um, I think that I'm inclined to go with the 25 percent. I guess I would go back to our regional reasons for setting up the MSDs and who is going to benefit the greatest. And the town does get a benefit, but the majority of the benefit is those people behind the beach that's re-nourished. And I go back to all that discussion, and especially the oceanfront owners who got the greatest benefit, uh, protecting their property, but then the use of the beach uh, for all those behind it. And in future years, if we've got to go replenish another area of town, you know, we're going to therefore go back and, and increase the town percentage of what we have to do there. I think, you know, going forth with no change, and I think the greatest, the greatest opportunity is going to be FEMA, because I think FEMA will give us some reimbursement, which has escalated our cost, the re-nourishment. And I think everybody, future years, including the town, will see a decrease. I just want to make sure that going into next year that we're conservative looking forward and that, in fact, we protect not only the MSDs, but, you know, the, the town. I, uh, I see no reason to keep upping the town contribution um, based upon why we put the MSDs in place. And 20% is even higher than we had in prior years, so. Chris, I have a question. So Monica, correct me if I'm wrong, Monica's suggestion about if we get gr a grant, we get it from FEMA or we get it from the state, and giving that grant money relieving taxpayer burden, how, how would that work? Well, you would just reduce the, it would reduce the amount that we would have to go in, that we would have to debt out. Okay. Right. Um, and so the, it, it, it doesn't change, I mean, once again, council can divvy up the remainder, what's remaining once the grant is, is funded anyway that the council saw fit, um, but it would it, it you would see you know instead of six million two hundred and ten you would see it reduced 
because we wouldn't have to debt that out anymore. That whatever we would get from the grants, we wouldn't have to debt out. So, you know, and then what, whether it was, if we, if we got 3.3 million, um, and, and I really can't prognosticate the chances of that, uh, frankly, but if we say we got that, um, and either at the revenue neutral or the 25%, um, we had, you know, we had already collected that, that MSD, then we would factor that in too, because that's, that's already money that's been, that's been banked, mm -hmm. and then we can, so that would come out, you know, we would, we would pull that out too, um, and factor that into what we would, what we would, what we would need to, you know, what would be left over to, to debt out. It wouldn't come off the debt, but it would come off the debt payments. So we could reallocate the MSDs any given year during a budget cycle. Yeah, yeah. What you can't do, what you can't do without going through an entire process is change the M, change mm. the boundaries of the MSD. Right. But, but each year. But in terms right. of rates. Um, you know, you can do, you can, you could change the rates every year if you wanted to, because that's established through the budget. Right. And so we, it, given the fact that we might have some more money to work with with a grant, then this discussion we're having about how much the town pays MSDA and B could be looked at every year, right. looked at with right. new information right. within the five-year period. You could look at it this way. You would get to enjoy another set of these next year <laughs> sure. if we got a grant. As long as they're color-coded, I'm good. And let, me, let me throw out another, another point here which I think we have to consider, and that is we're two years out from putting any sand on the beach. We got two hurricane seasons to go through. We don't know how much this money is going to even escalate. So if we go too low this year, you know, we could end, end up with significant increases in future years based upon more destruction of the beach. So. That's why I said go with what we know without the state, without the grants, keep it kind of flat moving forward and we're going to know more next year and we can reevaluate MSDs every year and protect ourselves a little bit for the future because none of us expected that in fact we're going to lose another 3.3 million on the beach, you know, over the last 12 months. God forbid. Well, regardless of what we decide today on that or if we do decide today, the other thing in the, that this, the bottom block does, the second to the bottom block, where we're seeing the, em, em, the impact on the fund balance over the next, through fiscal 2026, yeah. um, we've, got, we've got some decisions to make regarding, you know, where that deficit, those deficits come in if we have a fully funded uh, CIP. So where we don't see any impacts on 2021 with any of these because of everything Chris has explained, we do see where things get to be increasingly negative, um, you know, in the coming years, and it's definitely something we're going to have to grapple with. Um, I think everyone is very sensitive to keeping a revenue neutral rate this year, uh, and I think Chris has done a very good job of, of doing that for us, rounded or not, and so I appreciate that, but I do want to just call attention to the coming years mm -hmm. and what we might be faced with in those coming years, regardless of which scenario we go with. So again, I thank you for that, Chris. It's not pretty, but it's information you need to have. And I also want to note that we've all kind of gathered around Don's, uh, the mayor's conservative approach on the numbers, you know, uh, which don't include any grant money. And I think that that's a consensus that we all have right now is that we all know we have to plan for the worst. So that's something that we've all agreed on. Yeah. It's not an easy decision. Well, it's come to some consensus to give uh, Chris direction or additional discussion. I think we got basically the only outstanding issue we have right now is whether the town contributes 20 or 25%. Um, I think we're all, as Monica just said, we're all agreed on 6.2 million is what we need to recover, at least in the short term. I mean, I get the, I get the idea that MSDA is, and the entire MSD zones are beneficiaries for this 
huge amount of sand and huge project. And some would argue on the, f um, on the edges, on the uh, taper areas, maybe uh, not as much, but you can't argue the fact that this, that our town and, the, and those beaches have been well, well served by this project and, uh, and saved basically. So, well, I think I mean a, a good argument for council is basically there's a lot of unknowns, cost, the future years of destruction, um, FEMA or, or state reimbursements, and I think it's very uh, strong position saying we're going to go home and go forward with a revenue neutral rate, and we'll know about more in the next 12 years, 12 months, and uh, hopefully next year that we'll have some some relief or some reduced cost, and we'll be able to actually reduce down the cost going forward. But I think, the, you know, a very strong a strong argument right now is revenue neutral. You know, basically nothing changes. And based upon that, 12 months from now, we'll have a lot more information. Which would put us in, I guess, once again, the scenario two. And basically, it's, it's not a lot of dollars, basically, and every house is going to be different based upon their appraised value, so it's very hard to, you know, they set averages, and, and the impact is pretty insignificant, you know, from the standpoint of dollars overall. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to do that with the regular budget going forward. I don't know why we wouldn't do it with the MSDs as we gather more information, especially since we have no idea, you know, the impact of COVID going forward either. So, if we get a, a resurge in the fall, that could be, you know, detrimental to everybody too. I know. I wish that the uh, revenue neutral rate had a little bit of a negative difference, like the other three scenarios do. That's all, and I, I'm just sensitive to it, but um, I. I know that the difference for 20 to 25 percent for the town seems to be around 65,000 or 60, 60 odd, 60 plus. Um, I don't know. I just, I just think the optics look better with a little bit of a negative on the MSDs, and I know that seems silly, but that's just how I feel. Or maybe it doesn't seem silly. I just. That's just how I feel. <laughs> and I didn't know that the 25% was going to, I was honestly asking Chris to do the 25% because I wanted to kind of prove myself wrong on that and say this is too much for the town. But then when you show that other scenario with the revenue neutral and the town doing 20, which honestly may be in here somewhere from last time, <laughs> I can't remember, um, I, I, I'm gravitating toward that for those reasons that... Uh, it helps, it helps a little bit. And just because the county is not there anymore, the town actually percent, the default goes up anyhow, so. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the county does cover a solid 2.266 throughout all this, so we right. have to remember that. Thank right. you. Thank you for that, county. Um, but we pick up the slack. We pick up all the interest. Right. Yeah, so the county contribution is static. If we go revenue neutral, our contribution would be a little bit greater than in the past. It wouldn't have a great amount of relief for most of the taxpayers, but it, it would have some. And when, for me, when you look at the impact on the fund balance in years out, it's profound. It's 100,000 for three years, four years? Yeah, three years. it definitely the, the affects final, the mm -hmm. final three years that are on the, that's significant. And part of my concern with this was always, you know, was this project going to start impeding <clears throat> the other things that we need to do for town? You know, that we not get so pigeonholed into this project that we hamstring ourselves into being able to take care of other aspects of of town. 
So. And along those same lines, most of those CIP, CIP projects benefit the whole town yeah. versus a segment of the town, you know, that beach nourishment does. And yes, we do get benefit from that. We know that. But those homeowners behind that beach get a lot more benefit than the rest of the people in the town. So to bring some conclusion or forward motion on the budget, it would be helpful to decide this now so that we would have. <laughs> in, in, unless, I'm, unless I'm missing something, which is, is, is likely um, this is sort of the last remaining piece to, okay. to get the budget together. Um, one other way, I, I, for what my perspective is worth, I don't, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a preferred, um, I really don't have a preferred um, recommendation on, on each one because I can look at it each way. And, um, but one of the things that I look at w when I do look at this is that, you know, we haven't, um, so there, we know there's value to the entire town. That value is really reputation cost. Um, and, you know, that's the, that's the benefit that the, the rest of the town um, gets from uh, a beach nourishment, this beach nourishment project. Um, and and there, is, there is value to that. You, you know, everyone, if, if you're known as a place that's taking, you know, that's protecting its beaches, um, you know, that, that's a good thing. Um, it's good for uh, property owners, um, and so there, there is definitely value in that. If we were to calculate, and, and, and we could do this, but it, I didn't think it was particularly um, uh, relevant, and maybe I should have um, rethought that, but under the MSD revenue neutral rate, you know, you're looking at um, 1.3 cents, um, which would be dedicated, uh, which the you know which the re the entire town's paying for that. Um, that would go up to 1.7 cents, um, and so if we cost allocated that out, um, it would it would go out to um, the rest of the town, um, and. It, it, in how that equates to, to sense and how, you know, how someone would say, well, you're, in, you're increasing my tax in this other, you're increasing my tax to fund this other area. Um, I think that's, that's something that, um, th that, th that folks who are astute and, and care about this issue will bring up. The other thing is that because that equivalent is on the entire town, I just wonder if, if we ran the numbers, if whatever was saved in the negative 42 in the MSD, MSD B would theoretically be made up for in the, in the additional, you know, in whatever additional tax the whole town's paying. Um, kind of a convoluted way of looking at it, but it's another way of, of looking at it. Um, No, there's no question that the town benefits from the project in a lot of ways. Um, I, you know, just the seeing seeing pictures of you know pools or or chunks of deck going into the water is is never good. Uh, the town has a great reputation overall for all of the services that it's providing. That the boardwalk, obviously, the the sidewalks, the park. Um, I mean, we have done a lot for our community with our with our tax dollars, um, and I think overall we've done a really good job and spent wisely and gotten great grants to help um, boost all of the things we've been able to do. So I I see the value um, for um, 
and, and we're and we're talking about, you know, just this this it's more of a philosophical than a, than a coming down to dollars and cents right now. You know, how much should the town pay more? Uh, more? And we've been at 18 and talking about 20, so that's going up. Um, or 25, and so it's just a matter of where we slice that. Um, and um, I know that the revenue neutral rate isn't going to affect everybody in the town the, whole, the same way when we get there. That We've seen that in the past. Every time they re, we do the revaluation, yeah. we say, oh, well, your average cost or, you know, Taxes are going to say the same. Well, some people are going to benefit from that, and others aren't. And you're going to have your winners and losers. Usually, the people closer, you know, say to the, you know, to the ocean, a semi-ocean front, or somebody who's gotten a better, whose values might have increased at a higher rate. So it's never a perfect formula. I get that. I mean, you know, you could go down forty-two dollars on MSDA and still have somebody with a tax increase just because their tax went up. You know. So it's not a perfect thing. It's just more. Um, it's just more of a, um, you know, the, it's the optics I think for me, um, and and maybe that's not enough to hang your hat on. But I do appreciate what Nancy's saying about the effect on the fund balance over time, using that 25 percent. Um, it definitely does eat into it more. Uh, egregiously, but it's still negative. You know, it's still something we're going to have to deal with. It's not anything that's going to go away with a 20 or 25 percent split. Well, five years ago, we had the same discussion, and we talked about fairness and equity, and we did 40-40-20. And I'm not sure anything has changed from the standpoint of that discussion to today from a standpoint of the benefit to those in MSDA and MSDB and the benefit to the other rest of the town. I mean, I think that that was kind of a scenario that we had put forth and we had a lot of discussion on it then and I remember the charts that we put up and I'm not sure anything has changed since then and if you're on the ocean front in the MSD area, you're getting the greatest benefit and if you're behind it, you're getting, you know, a secondary benefit, you got a beach and uh, there's, you know, peripheral benefit to the to the rest of the town. And at this point in time, and, I, and Nancy makes a good point, we want to do other things moving forward, and the more we put ourselves in debt for, you know, supporting this one area, the less we can do. And I think we can revisit this next year because, in fact, it's going to be, every, the whole scenario will change by the time we get next year with respect to grants and cost of the project, because, we, you know, we're only looking at estimates right now anyhow, so. And I think it, you know, once again, I'll go back to it's a very justifiable position to say basically, you know, we've taken your rate, it's a revenue neutral rate, it will be reevaluated in uh, the following year based upon more information. And, you know, this is a very unusual year, unusual financial year for everybody, so. We did not prepare, I mean, we, we, we weren't really prepared to have a final budget ordinance mm -hmm. ready, so, um, you know, the plan was to recess to reconvene to adopt the budget based on this discussion, and, uh, and if council would like to um, think on this, um, think about this for until that point, you, you could certainly do that. I'm not sure um, how many minds will be changed, but you could certainly do that. And we could finalize this um, at that point. I mean, we're going to have to meet one more time to probably approve the budget anyhow, because you're going to have to put all the numbers together. But, you know, I'm pretty firm with respect to my position. And I'm definitely not going to change whether we meet next week or two weeks from now. I mean, I just think that the revenue neutral rate moving forward is the best way to go, and I'm pretty committed to that. I mean, 
I don't see I don't see anything that's going to change my mind from the standpoint of the count town contribution for the coming year. Future years might be different, but at this point in time, I don't see any reason to change and to continue to delay the process. I'll be welcome to other opinions or comments, but I'd like to see us get get towards finalization of the budget going into next year. I kind of feel the same way Don does. So I looked at this thing three or four times in the last couple of days, and it's, I come up with the same answer. I think the, the explanation that Chris gave there, uh, <clears throat> the reduction with the 25% may be negated with an increase that would cover the whole town kind of covers everything and means that we should just go with the suggestion that you're making. Alrighty then. Go. Okay. <laughs> um, I, what it is is the <clears throat> revenue neutral rate and um, it's, it's unfortunate that it doesn't come out to be completely the same amount that anybody's paying in taxes just based on revaluation. So it's the principle of revenue neutral that we're agreeing on. And uh, some people will see a, a, a slight increase and others will see a slight decrease. But overall, the principle is that it's no change. And that holds true, that holds true for our ad valorem as well, correct? There'll be some right. different, you know, there'll be some differential experience. Right, and that's yeah. exactly right. And that's something that people always, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna hold up the, the, I think, you know, we can, it's, it's a. Okay, so I think the direction on the MSDs is basically go forth with the revenue neutral rate, Chris. Let's also, does anybody have any comments with respect, we didn't talk about CIPs last time? Um, most CIPs have been delayed, but we should take one quick look and make sure that there's no objection to CIPs that are in the plan for next year. Probably look at uh, the project cost summary. There's very few items on there. Right. I don't remember seeing anything. I had a problem with. Page four, right in the back. Yeah. The first item is the, obviously the public safety building at $450,000. And we may or may not be at a point, you know, where we're requesting that transfer from the fund balance to get into final engineering. Um, where we're at with the environmental assessment is the 30-day period has ended. Um, there were some minor comments uh, which uh, we need to respond to, and then I, I expect, um, as soon as they're able to write it, that we would um, that we would get a finding of no significant impact, which would then mean we go into the next step, which is um, where uh, where the real estate division does an appraisal of the property, uh, determines whether or if there's um, they're going to recommend. Um, a, a lease payment to the town. I, I don't expect they will, but there's a chance. Um, and those are all things that council is going to have to, as that information comes in, council is going to have to make a, a, a decision on where, how to proceed with the project. Um, uh, so those, you know, both of those numbers are, once again, very, very flexible because um, they could get pushed out just based on uh, the timing of, of 
uh, working with the, the core on, on the availability of the property and, and what decisions or what, uh, what recommendations come out as, um, you know, from the, from, the, uh, from the Department of Defense, so. If there's no discussion there, we'll go on to the replacement of police MDTs, the terminals, 22,000. We've got replacement of turnout gear for the fire department, 15,000. <clears> Don, can we just back up for a minute? Sure. Um, the public safety building construction. Explain to me again this four, what are we doing with this $450,000? That would be going into final designs. So that'd be architectural fees if, right. if so. we go to, if we, if we get to the point where, um, where everything is locked up and we want to move forward. Right, but we it. still don't, we have, we still don't have any, Lease agreement. With that. Yeah, and that money that money is not currently in the budget. That would be uh, appropriated from fund balance if we get to that point in FY <coughs> in FY 2021. So, I may be missing something here, but it seems to me that we're putting the cart before the horse, spending that money on design before we know whether or not we're going to have uh, an acceptable lease agreement. We've been kind of appropriating at 450 for years now, correct? We've yeah, been rolling that forward. That's been in there. And the, the anticipation the would be, balance. the anticipation would be, I mean, Rob, you're actually, you're absolutely right. The anticipation would be that, um, that we get those decisions and, and this year, which, which I can't, um, I mean, I, once again, it all depends on their process, but, um, and it, 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 it's, it's very possible that, that we could move to where we want to do final design in 2021 um, because everything comes together. It also could be that all that gets pushed out past 2022 because we don't have the information yet. Um, so um, once again, that money has not been appropriated. Um, my best guess right now um, in the scenario that, uh, that I would put forward to council is that it, that it is going to happen this year, but it's also just as likely that it could be pushed forward. So both of those number, both of those numbers, and, and those those time slots are are really for planning purposes and um, only at this point. So we're not going to spend any money until we know for sure we can have Correct. property. Repaving of the duck trail, should that now move to 200? Yeah, we didn't, this is the old budget, so. I mean, this is, this document hasn't been updated with, with right. changes. Then we have the pedestrian plan, phase four. Right. That's total cost without the grant, or does that have the grant in it? I'm sorry? Does it have the grant in it or not? Pedestrian plan. Is that the uh, yeah, that in, that includes the grant. This actually, that number is actually um, high in this. It's correct in the budget. Yeah. Um, Beach planning at one hundred fifty-one thousand. That's is that going to be the same kind of allocation for plants and volunteers to plant the sprigs yeah, and all that? Yeah, and. And we should, we should add beach planning, sand fencing, and monitoring, mm. because it's also monitoring costs. And we still get an offset from the county on that? 24,000. Yeah. And the shoreline stabilization is what we just talked about and authorized. With the grant, the right. right, includes the grant. Yep. So those are the CIP items. Any further discussion on that? I'm just presuming back to the police MDTs that we don't need them in 2022 just because of the, and 25 and beyond, it's just because they only, they don't need them every year, the replacement. Correct. We've got a, a zero for 2022. Correct. Okay. They get, they get, um, essentially they do half eat over two, they, they, they spread it out over two fiscal years. Um, and they, they generally have a, a lifespan of, of about three years. Okay. If 
there's no further questions on the CIP, I think what I think, Chris, you've got answers to everything you need now to put together the ordinance. Mm -hmm. I think we should look at a date to approve the budget moving forward. I'm going to be out of town for Monday through Thursday next week. All right. I don't want to hold anything up. I don't know if Friday the 26th is too late. But I, mean, we've, I mean, we've got till the end of the month, so. Yeah, or the 19th. I don't know. I'll be here all through the weekend. Monday's going to be gone 22nd through the 25th. 25th. I, I uh, will be out of town starting on the 22nd. Starting the 22nd? Yeah. But if I can do this remotely, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Or Sorry? Con convene on the 19th, is that too soon? Robert, could we do this by Zoom? Uh, yes. Uh, you've already had your public hearing, so you're not limited to the limitations in the statute dealing with a remote meeting. Uh, so I don't know of any reason that you couldn't do it that way. Yeah, so I guess the only other possibility would be if the emergency declaration gets lifted before so then. Yeah. Because that's your authority to act remotely is the emergency declaration. And that's still in effect? It is. Right. Okay. Which will probably stay in effect for quite a while, actually. So that leaves the three of us next week. Do you, when, when can you have it prepared by, Chris? I could have it ready tomorrow. <laughs> Except at 10 a.m. when I'm going to get rid of my COVID here. Friday is fine with me if you want to do it Friday. Yeah. I don't care. Friday? Are you good with Friday? Friday? I can't. Well, it depends on what time Friday. Can we do it first thing Friday morning, 9 o'clock? I can't. I can't. Yeah, can't. yeah what's good Sorry. for you Friday? What's good? Friday's, I'm, Friday is a strange day. I'm just really jammed up and I have a medical appointment. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I get the same thing at 9.30. I'll be out by 10 o'clock, so at 10. I could do it at like 8 in the morning. But <laughs> I know that's not a hour that a lot of people enjoy. Tomorrow? Tomorrow morning? Give you a, a little time to get ready, so 10 o'clock maybe or something like that? Or? I don't know how much time you're going to need, Chris, but. Can we, can we do it early afternoon? I could do it after. 1 p.m.? I could do it, I can't do it at one, but I could do it any time after, I could do it at three. Is that, does that work? Three o'clock tomorrow? Yeah. I can be there at three. Does that work for you? Does that work? All right. Three o'clock tomorrow? Do it right that time. It shouldn't take too long. Best thing to do, Robert, would be to recess today's meeting while we're there? Uh, yes, at the end of the meeting, you would do that okay. till that day and time. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for... Chris, is there me. anything else on the budget that you need from council? No, I think, I think I'm clear. Oh, thanks. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we enter into closed session in accordance with section 143-318.116 of the North Carolina General Statutes to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, conditions of appointment, or conditions of initial employment of an individual public officer or an employee or prospective public officer or employee. We'll do a roll call vote to go into closed session. Mayor Pro Tem Thibodeau? Aye. Council Member Booney? Aye. Council Mooney Whitman? Aye. Council Mooney Cavanis? Aye. The mayor votes aye. Five zero. We're going to go into closed session. We're going to do this in the front conference room. Uh, we are at a closed session. There's nothing to report. At this time, I'll entertain. Back in open session. Oh, me. In. You're, you're right out from. I'm sorry. Maybe I misheard. You're in open session now. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're good. 
<laughs> Thank you, Robert. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to recess the meeting till 3 p.m. on June 18th. I make a motion we recess the meeting to June 18th at 3 p.m. And with this time, I'll do a roll call. All in favor? Uh, Monica Libido? Aye. Aye. Council Member Mooney? Aye. Council Member Whitman? Aye. Council Member Cavinis? Aye. And Mayor votes aye. And we are in recess until June 18th at 3 p.m. Thank you. Thank you.